Hey everyone, welcome to The Daily. Today is Wednesday, February 20th. Greg Lalas alongside Andrew Wiebe. I'm back in the office. It's good to be back. Ten days on the road in Arizona where it was actually pretty chilly. A little sunburn, Greg. I am a little sunburn. I got some of that in Orlando yeah, myself. You did. So it's, uh, anyway, a lot going on in MLS. In fact, one of the teams that is in Tucson, Arizona right now, the Seattle Sounders, right on the top of the list of all the news. And the big news for them, of course, is that Shaori Joseph has joined the Seattle Sounders, the longtime New England Revolution talisman who joined Chivas USA last year, now moving up north to Seattle where the trade is basically two second round picks, 2014 and 2015, go to Seattle. There's also a switch in the allocation rankings. So Seattle now at number three and Chivas now at number 15. A lot of chatter on Twitter and all over the place about this trade. What are your thoughts? Well, I think that Chivas had to get rid of Joseph. They made it clear that he was not going to stick around. They could not afford to have that DP salary on the cap when they're trying to make moves, trying to complete that roster ahead of Chilis' first season for Seattle. Man, Siggy Schmidt, he pulled the wool over our eyes a little bit, I think, as a group. He said, look, Joseph's not even fit. They sent him out of camp. All of a sudden, he comes back. That was a shrewd bit of bargaining from Siggy there, but if you're the Sounders, you have to be very happy with this one. You get a guy that can play on the back line in the center midfield and even up top. I think Schmidt saying, look, we, we probably want him in the midfield. We might see him up top, but boy, that's a, a shrewd pickup there for Seattle. Yeah, Seattle seeming to come out on the better side of this. However, if you are Chivas USA, the idea is there is a little bit of a salary dump. You get some of Shaori Joseph's uh, salary off your books. Seattle picking up some of it. Chivas will still have some of it as well. Well, the other point to be made too is the allocation ranking might not matter that much for Chilis. That's not going to be a guy likely that, that you know subscribes that Latin American vibe that may be a U.S. national team player, but if they don't have that Hispanic background, Chivas has shown we're not that interested. Yeah, that's a good point. So the other part of this I think is interesting is, and you mentioned it a little bit, they get Shaori out of the fold, and it seems like there was a little bit of a, a, a disconnect between the two. In fact, at Soccer Musings on Twitter, uh, our friend Alicia Rodriguez actually coming out and saying that this is a salary dump, and you get someone a pain in the butt, I think it was uh, sort of the, not the term that was used, but the idea that was used, out of the Chivas fold. So, Shaori Joseph moving to Seattle. We're going to stay in the Cascadia Cup to continue this conversation a little bit, because there's some other news coming out up in Vancouver. Honduran international Johnny Leveron joining the Vancouver uh, Whitecaps. Good center back. They needed a little bit of help in back. What do you think? I think it's a good signing for them. Apparently they've been in talks with Leveron since the end of that Olympic qualifying campaign, mm -hmm. that qualifying in London, the Olympics outright. I think he was the captain of that team. So Vancouver gets there, man. He joins a center back fold that is pretty full right now, though. Although veteran, you've got uh, Jaden Merritt, Andy O'Brien, and then Brad Rusin brought in mm -hmm. by uh, Martin Rennie, a guy that he had in Carolina before. So a lot of competition there, but certainly a young, talented player that talked to the Honduran imports here, guys like Roger Espinosa that were also on that Olympic team, and decided this was the right move for him. Leveron is 23 years old only, but he has plenty of caps with the Honduran national team. And the last little bit of news from the Pacific Northwest, Portland Timbers owner Merritt Paulson tweeting out today that the deal for Mikel Silvestre is almost done. They're just waiting on some visa and paperwork stuff. And then the former Manchester United player will be joining the Timbers. So keep an eye out on MLSsoccer.com for all of that news about Silvestre and all of the transactions that are going on. Well, one more transaction from Tuesday to get to. The Houston Dynamo sending Javon Watson, the Jamaican international, to FC Dallas in return for a 2015 second round super draft pick. Now, Andrew, this was a move that Houston was making in order to clear some space so they can go and get uh, the Scottish player Andrew Dr Andy Driver. However, uh, this is also a move that maybe gives Javon Watson a chance to play a little more. Yeah, he had struggled to get time under Dom Kinnear there in Houston. And Charles Heinemann came out and said that we needed another central midfielder. Andrew Jacobson, kind of the guy in there that, that's going to pull the strings as far as the box-to-box the box role, but not a whole lot behind him with Daniel Hernandez retiring this season. So you get an international, you get a guy hungry for playing time, and you get a guy to maybe fill in should David Ferreira or Jacobson go down with injuries this year. Well, the Dynamo continue to remake their roster, and FC Dallas doing a little bit of the same. Time to go a little further south than Texas. We're going all the way down to South America where in Copa Libertadores play Tijuana. The Mexican champions that star uh, Edgar Castillo, U.S. international, in the roster, in the lineup for them. They go down to Colombia and get a victory over Milonarios. Now, Milonarios roster had Freddy Montero, Rafael Robayo, and Jorge Perlaza actually came in as a sub. 
It's a huge win for Tier 1. Yeah, massive win in the opening group stage game. Joe Benny Corona also playing for them, but Castillo gets the assist. A very, very good game from him from all reports, whipping it in with his left foot. Freddie Montero, according to a lot of the chatter on Twitter, not a lot of connection with his partner up there. Mm. So that's got to be a concern for him as he looks to either earn a move away or it returns to Seattle Sanders after that loan move is up. Well, that's the second big victory for a Mexican club in South America. About a week ago, Toluca went down and got a victory at Boca Juniors. However, Toluca lost last night to Nacional of Uruguay 3-2, despite having a 2-1 lead in the second half. So Mexican clubs up and down in Copa Libertadores play so far. That's it for the Daily Today. Make sure you check out the Extra Time Radio podcast. The guys had Kenny Cooper from FC Dallas on the show. You can get it on iTunes, Buzzsprout, Stitcher Radio, or right here on MLSsoccer.com. And lots of matches being streamed today. We have two from Tucson, where the Desert Diamond Cup rolls on, here on MLSsoccer.com. And also, make sure you check out the Portland preseason tournament and the Carolina Challenge Cup, all taking place today. You can get all the news and all the reaction to it all from MLSsoccer.com.